You've probably heard by now that hyperbaric oxygen reduces inflammation and improves your immune system function. But do you know how or why it does that? That's what we're gonna cover in today's video. Welcome to video three of mechanisms of action of hyperbaric oxygen therapy. So far we've covered the introductory concept of trying to move away from using hyperbaric oxygen specifically as a protocol to apply to a very specific diagnosis. I believe that more thought needs to go into how we apply hyperbaric oxygen to make it as effective and broad reaching as I know that hyperbaric can be. We then covered in the last video, category number one, which was the antimicrobial effect of hyperbaric oxygen and why and how we use it with certain infections, both on label as well as off label. In this video, we're talking about the other immune modulating characteristics that hyperbaric oxygen affect. And then once we understand those mechanisms, again, how to apply them both on or off label. So in video three, there's definitely some overlap between category one and category two. Category one, this antimicrobial effect, and category two, this immune modulating effect. But I break them into two separate categories because sometimes the immune modulating is very specifically in tandem with fighting an infection. But there's a lot of other immune related issues that we might use hyperbaric with specifically when it comes to not just creating an environment that might kill the infection itself, but actually stimulating an improved immune response from our body. And that improved immune response may help fight infection, but that improved immune response may also help react to allergies more appropriately. Or that improved immune response may also help balance autoimmunity. Or even when we talk about, is it appropriate to use hyperbaric for cancer, where cancer is also an immune response in many ways. And so understanding some of the immune balancing or the immune modulating effects of hyperbaric allow us not to say, is it appropriate to use hyperbaric for allergies? Is it appropriate to use hyperbaric for autoimmunity? Is it appropriate to use hyperbaric for cancer? It's, is it appropriate to use hyperbaric to modulate the immune system in a patient that's either immune imbalanced or over inflamed or immune compromised? And can we then apply hyperbaric to improve the immune system response? And that's exactly what we're gonna talk about in this video. So as I've mentioned earlier in some of the other videos, there's about 12 different mechanisms of action that we constantly repeat, teach, and go over in great detail in our 40-hour certification courses. Of those 12, three of them would be very specific to this conversation. Those three include a reduced cytokine response, and we'll cover what all of that means, reduced intravascular leukocyte adherence, and I'll cover what that means as well, and then increased leukocyte oxidative killing. So let's just take each one of those separately. Hyperbaric has a very specific effect on our cytokines. Cytokines are markers involved in inflammation. Hyperbaric is well known to have three effects on cytokines. It reduces inflammatory cytokines. It increases our body's own anti-inflammatory cytokines as well as it increases our body's regulatory cytokines. Regulatory cytokines help keep a balance between the inflammatory and the anti-inflammatory cytokines. So we get this inflammatory balancing or modulating through hyperbaric oxygen. Reduced intravascular leukocyte adherence. Part of the inflammatory response is that white blood cells all migrate into an area of infection or trauma or damage. And as they all aggregate to this area, they can create other issues, partially with that cytokine storm, so cytokines from that other mechanism, and this white blood cell mobilization to this area, it could start to block or impede blood flow. It can create other issues in our circulatory system. And so hyperbaric helps to reduce the white blood cell adherence or the white blood cell stickiness to allow the blood to flow more freely and with less obstacle. And then lastly, increased leukocyte oxidative killing. Very specifically, one of our leukocytes or white blood cells a lymphocyte, which is really one of the white blood cells our bodies use to fight viruses specifically, they use oxidative free radicals to kill those infections. And one of the concepts of hyperbaric, and we've covered this in numerous videos, is there is an oxidative component to hyperbaric. You're getting increased levels of oxygen. That oxygen's being metabolized in the mitochondria. The mitochondria are releasing some free radicals as a normal process of energy production. 
There's a lot of benefits, and there are some potential consequences to that oxidation. We've covered numerous times in other videos. Please take a look. But for this conversation, one of the ways that that increased oxidation gets soaked up is by literally arming our lymphocytes with ROS, reactive oxygen species, which they will then use to help fight infection. And so literally, we're increasing the oxidative strength of our immune system. In other words, increasing our white blood cells' ability to fight infection. Like I mentioned in the last antimicrobial video, certain infections may be aerobic. They may like oxygen. And is it appropriate to use hyperbaric for those cases? As I mentioned, there's such a strong immune effect that in our clinic, we would still want to use hyperbaric because we know that by building a person's immune system, by the way, in so many of these chronic illnesses, people are immune compromised. They've been fighting for so long. Their white blood cell counts are low. Their white blood cell energy is low. Their ability to mobilize it, an attack is inhibited. And by arming our white blood cells with the ROS that they need to fight infection is going to be very meaningful in improving the infection fighting process. Bonus mechanism. After recording this video, I went back to the mechanisms of action and I realized there's really one more that we should be talking about in this category of immune modulation. While it's not directly modulating your immune system, it is responsible for helping to reduce swelling and edema, which is really part of the inflammatory response. So one of the major mechanisms of hyperbaric oxygen, again, non-controversial, very well known, is the fact that oxygen is a vasoconstrictor. And we can use oxygen's vasoconstricting capacity and even greater vasoconstricting capacity at pressures, meaning hyperbaric environment with enriched oxygen has an even higher vasoconstrictive capacity. And so in conditions where we are dealing with a lot of swelling and edema, whether that's an acute swelling issue from a trauma injury or surgery, or it's chronic swelling and edema from other health-related issues, hyperbaric's ability to create vasoconstriction can really help reduce the edema and swelling associated with these different conditions. So I want to make sure that we put this mechanism in category two as well. We'll get right back to the video, but real quick, I wanted to let you know that if you're new to hyperbaric and you're really trying to learn more about hyperbaric oxygen and its appropriate uses, I wrote a book, Oxygen Under Pressure, which is available on Amazon, and it goes into the details of what is hyperbaric, how does it work? Why does it work? Why is it so powerful for so many of the things that it helps? And how do we use it appropriately and use it safely? And so if you're interested in that, we're going to add a link in the description below so that you can buy that book today. All right, now back to the video. So now how do we apply this to some of the folks that we would see in our office? Well, most of the studies that exist on these three categories are done at higher pressure, 2.0 or greater. That being said, there are some studies specifically on the cytokine side that show Lower pressure, mild pressure, 1.3, 1.5, also has a great anti-inflammatory effect. So we know for sure we can use a very wide range of pressures from an inflammatory control standpoint. So whether that means an acute injury that's inflamed and we're trying to reduce it, or that means reducing the swelling from that injury, or it means somebody challenged with an autoimmune disease that is chronically out of balance in their immune system and chronically over-inflamed systemically in their body, we can use this range of pressures of oxygen to really bring the inflammatory process down, to bring our anti-inflammatory cytokines up, and to help modulate and balance in the immune system through increasing the regulatory cytokines. When it comes to the increased leukocyte oxidative killing and the reduction in intravascular leukocyte adherence, there's very little studies, quite honestly, at any other pressure below two atmospheres. Does that mean it's inappropriate or ineffective to use it? Personally, I don't believe so. I believe we can use hyperbaric in, again, multitude of different pressures to get those effects, particularly and especially in the ROS category, because we know that oxygen is oxidative. We know that any increase in oxygen is going to increase ATP production. And we know that a byproduct of increasing ATP production is the body's release of superoxide of oxygen-free radicals. And so to think that some of that increase, whether it's smaller at, at mild pressures and higher at higher pressures, that doesn't mean we're not getting any, we're getting some. And so can we use that increased oxidation to still fuel an immune response? My belief, again, clinically is yes. So this is an area within the hyperbaric field that definitely continues to need more research. That being said, I still believe it's very appropriate to use this wide range, anything from 1.3 to 2.0 or greater, and again, 
especially when we're looking at a patient and trying to achieve the benefits, we need to look at the chronicity of the patient's issue. If these are autoimmune issues that they've been dealing with for many years or being immune compromised from multiple subacute infections that continually beat up their system, this isn't something that we're going to apply a 1.3 atmosphere chamber for five sessions and expect them to be completely cured. This is something that's going to take time. And so we really need, whether we're using mild pressures, moderate pressures, or higher pressures, this is also going to likely be something, if their health challenges have been going on for years and years and years, we need to be looking at the 20, 30, 40, or more hours of therapy in order to really start moving the needle and improving their health. So I hope this helps you understand where hyperbaric helps modulate the immune system where it also connects to that antimicrobial component, how the hyperbaric environment could help fight infection, but also how hyperbaric reduces inflammation and improves your body's immune response to fight infection on its own. We'll see you next time on the next video. We're gonna be talking about the mitochondrial aspect of hyperbaric oxygen and how we use hyperbaric oxygen to drive or to increase cellular energy. So make sure you subscribe so you can catch the next two videos in this series, the mitochondrial aspect of hyperbaric and then the regenerative concept of hyperbaric oxygen. We'll see you next time and thanks again for your attention. Whether you're a chiropractor or a naturopath or an acupuncturist or a DO or even an MD, but you're looking at hyperbarics through this lens, the lens that I'm describing, which is applying hyperbarics for all these off-label conditions, this is the class that teaches that. And right now it's the only class that teaches this type of hyperbarics in this way. And that's an actual certification course. Check out hbotusa.com and uh, right across the, the top, you'll see upcoming events. You can click on that and it'll show you uh, when our next courses are gonna be.